Good evening, everybody. Just want to, it is a beautiful day, and uh, we are waiting on our guests to get here. So, everybody, bear with us. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in Atlanta, Georgia. How is everybody doing tonight? Just checking in, make sure you guys can hear us, and checking in with everybody. Waiting on Kip to get here, waiting on um, Watchful was handling something. He'll be here shortly. So, stand by, everybody. So, Kip has some really interesting information. She has studied what happened this past weekend. And it's, it's actually really compelling. The, I'm sure you guys are aware of that we had an earthquake and a lightning strike at the exact same time. It was, it was really interesting. So, uh, everybody having a good day? How's the weather out there in your guys' neck of the woods? It was, man, the weather has been bipolar here. It has um, been, it, it, it's sunny one second, then it's cold the next. Sunny one second, then cold the next. It's, um... You know, you feel like you can plant your annuals, and then you get them in the ground, and you literally have to cover them up. Oh, here we go. We have Kip. Hey, Kip. Hey, Kip. Um, How are you? I am good. I am good. I, uh, I've i been going back and forth with my, my son all night. He's like, Mom, you got to take the baby tonight. You got to take... I'm like... Nope, nope, nope. I just got back from a long trip and I am exhausted and I'm not going to entertain her. I'll get her in the morning. So, <laughs> yeah. How are you doing? Well, I'm good. I'm good. Um, took a flying trip to Missouri. And um, while I was there, you uh, texted me about the, um, the earthquake. And um, the weird thing was I was sitting at a table with, with some friends and they were getting a hold of some friends in New York that were right there in the earthquake. And so they were giving us, you know, the scoopity do on exactly what was happening there. And uh, so it was really fun. And then um, I was in a place where I barely had any internet. And so on my way home, I'm driving and I'm talking to my daughter on the, the phone and I'm like, look up this person, look up that person. We're being sleuthy sleuths and we're doing all this research. And then when she had to go, I got on the uh, the group chat um, on Signal with you know with Leilani, with Chris, um, with Paul, and we're sleuthy sleuthing some more. Hey, you guys, <laughs> what, about what about that? And so this is really t tonight's going to be a super team effort <laughs> from uh, my my wonderful daughter, Sydney, who is brilliant, absolutely brilliant and a very much a sleuthy sleuth. And uh, the rest of the team that were they were being so sweet to me. I don't know if they had as much fun as I did, but I would say, somebody, somebody look up the meaning of Pennsylvania. And then Chris got back to me. And was like, Yes, yes. Look up this verse. And then, I mean, I was so excited, and I don't know how <laughs> excited I was, but I was having yeah. a call. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, so I know that you have done some digging on several things when it comes to what happened over the weekend. You know, we had a lightning strike in about the same 24 hours that struck the Statue of Liberty. Then we had that earthquake, which is really rare for that part of the country. And what was interesting is they were voting on something to do with the Gaza resolution at the time, and they had to pause that for this. <laughs> well, of course they did. Of course they did. The Lord is... God was speaking. He was speaking. He was. 
he he gets angry when we come against his his people his children he that is his uh what does the lord the the bible calls it his inheritance um hmm. yeah it's it's his portion it's his land when when the whole world comes against this little piece that he kept for himself as his beloved um he he's an he's an angry jealous jealous uh lover to put it put it mildly yes he yeah. loves people and he is an angry jealous you don't come against his his bride you don't do it yeah. just don't do it so these people they're in some trouble they're in some trouble <laughs> Yeah, so I, I'm looking forward to hearing what you researched and what you found other than just, you know, it's, you know, the, just the basics alone is prophetic enough. You know, that lightning strike on the Statue of Liberty was like a wowzer. And then, <laughs> you know, the East Coast doesn't get earthquakes. Then it, it you know, like you said, I think the... Uh, center point of that earthquake i forget what that's called but that landed right on white house avenue or white house boulevard or something of the white house yeah. station yeah while they were voting on the gaza resolution so i mean good it, point a uh, very prophetic i mean <laughs> just uh, a sign of the times guys i mean that is the you know, they, the non-believers would argue this all day long. Mm -hmm. They would argue it all day long. Say, oh, these are just coincidences. Look, first of all, I don't believe in coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. But well, what, and, what have you come up with? Well, Chris said something in the chat today about coincidence. Uh, uh, Chris Kenny. And uh, he said that at some point, coincidence becomes a mathematical impossibility. <laughs> I think we might <laughs> mathematical impossibility in just the last two or three days going in through the eclipse. We're, we're already, yeah. got, there's no way any of this is an accident. There's no way any of this is a uh, coinky dink. The Lord is speaking. And he told us that he put signs in the heavens. Um, the, the sun, the moon, the stars, they are signs to speak to us. He loves us so much that he he talks to us through everything, through nature, through the signs in the heavens, through dreams, through numbers, and we're going to kind of put um, what happened in the natural uh, with this earthquake together with the supernatural and what God is saying, and we're going to throw some numbers in there too because because God loves numbers. He loves to weigh, measure, mark out, uh, count. That's that's what he does. Um, and there's actually this really cool angel that is mentioned in, da in, in um, Daniel. It's kind of hard to find because they don't know what to do. The, the, the uh, King James, the guys who were doing the King James Bible, they didn't know how to translate. And it kind of freaked them out because it talked about this angel named Palmini, the wonderful numberer of secrets. They didn't know what to do with that. So they just put it. And that special angel. <laughs> so look up Palmini, P A L. M O N I. And uh, it is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. He's the wonderful number of secrets. So when God says he knows the number of tears you cry and he knows the number of hairs on your head, he does. Palmini is hard at work. I'm telling you. So here's the deal. Let's get into the fun. So there was an earthquake at 923 AM. The epicenter was White House Station, New Jersey. It was, that's 40 miles away from New York City, and it was on 4-5-2024. Now, some news reports say that that epicenter was at Lebanon, New, New Jersey, but um, but it wasn't. It was, it was just a little further over, so it actually was in White House Station. But let me tell you, Lebanon is a wonderful prophetic word as well. Um, Lebanon is a Gentile nation that Jesus first took the gospel to. You know, the, there was a big problem with him taking the gospel to his own people. They wouldn't listen to him. So, uh, so he went up into, into uh, uh, what we now know as Lebanon. Back then, um, I think it would have been Ephraim. It well, it's where the tribe of Ephraim should have been. 
So, um, but yeah, so he went up to Lebanon and the capital cities or the big cities there in Lebanon are Tyre and Sidon. Well, what, what is Sidon? That's where Ahab and Jezebel had their palace was in Sidon. Remember the, the story of Elijah and uh, he was trying to stay out of Sidon because Je Jezebel was looking to kill him. So I think this is really funny that Lebanon um, is the home of Tyre and Sidon and Sidon is where Jezebel and Ahab used to live. And that's going to that's going to come up again. So keep listening. This is going to come up again. Very prophetic and very fun. So 40 signifies a time of testing being completed. Testing is over. So Jesus was tested by the devil for 40 days in the wilderness and 40 days it was over. Um, poor Moses, he had three tests. <laughs> he had 20 years in Egypt as a prince. That, that didn't go very well. Uh, 20 years as a shepherd um, out in Midian. Uh, that went a little bit better, but um, shepherds are the most hated people in Egyptian society. So we went from prince, the prince, down to being the most hated as shepherd. Um, and he remained a shepherd the rest of his life because the last 20 years of his test was shepherding the nation of Israel, which is not easy. There's a lot of sheep and they're, they're wily. They're, they're wily and, and stiff-necked, so the Bible tells us. So 40, and it's 40 miles from, from New York, signifies a time of testing being completed. And we've got this shaking. We've got this shaking going on. It, was, it wasn't a really, it wasn't a devastating earthquake. So it was like you would, well, we know that, that Jesus talked about the, uh, the wise and foolish virgins. And they had fallen asleep. And then when the bride, the bridegroom came, only half of them had oil, the oil of the Holy Spirit um, relationship with the Lord in their lamp. Only, only half of them were ready to go. Well, the shaking, it's not a hard shaking. It's, it's like you would shake your bride to wake her up and say, come on, it's time to go. He's shaking his bride and, and saying, wake up, wake up. The time is short. The time is so short. Hmm. So it's shaking. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And shake, yeah. Shaking as a birth pain um, is, you know, the birth pains go from, from little to big. This is a little one. So that means that there's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger ones coming. Right. And it's a sign. It's a sign of judgment. It's a sign of judgment. So what do you think of all that? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy. Well, here, yeah. here, been more fun. So the date was four or five. And guess who our 45th president was? Ooh. Donald Trump. Yes. And what's the meaning of Trump? Trumpet. And we know that there are so many end times prophetic scriptures about the trumpet and the last Trump. Uh, you know, the, the, the shofar, the ram's horn that they, they blow. I, I gave mine to my friend Jackie because she's going to use it a lot more than I do. And I'm terrible at it. I'm absolutely a terrible shofar blower. So <laughs> with that said, uh, that shofar, that, that's a sound of victory. So you could also say that Trump or trumpet means victory. That's their battle cry. That's their victory call. I mean, Jews mean business. They mean business when they're blowing the shofar. Well, that's our 45th president's name. And it's heralding an, an announcement. Um, in Revelation, the trumpet represents the voice of Jesus itself, which I think is amazing. Now, the word Trump is in the Bible 111 times. And if, if there's any numbers, freakos out there, uh, 111 is a, a call for perfect unity. Perfect unity is what 111 means. And Trump is in the Bible 111 times. The call for perfect unity. You know, that that kills me. So um, Trump's dad, his name was Frederick Christ Trump, believe it or not. I think that's kind of, I don't know if I would name my, my child Christ, but Frederick Tr Christ Trump. Now, Trump was recognized by Israel as a Cyrus. Well, actually, not just by Israel, but pretty much everybody saw this one. 
um, as a King Cyrus um, back in 2020. He was he was definitely recognized not in 2020, uh, 2018 as a Cyrus. Um, Cyrus was a Gentile king who was used by God to restore Israel. Um, he was that's when Israel was in the uh, the Babylonian captivity. And they were they were supposed to live out this 70 year sentence. Well, at the end of the 70 years, Cyrus was the king and God actually used Cyrus to send the people back. Oh, and wow. Did he send them back? He sent all of the booty they had taken from the temple back as well. Only God can make that happen. Only God can make that happen. So anyway, uh, so Trump was used by God to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. So it's it's a very much a type and a shadow of what Cyrus did to restore Israel. Trump restored um, Jerusalem as the capital by officially recognizing it. No other nation would do it. We had so many presidents. We had probably five or six presidents at the, in during my lifetime who promised that they would recognize Jerusalem as the capital, and they never did. Not even Ronald Reagan. And everybody's, ooh, Ronald Reagan's so great. And I love Ronald Reagan. <laughs> but yeah. he didn't keep that promise. And that was a promise to God. Yeah, they, it's, you know, frankly, out of, Really, all the presidents that we've had, let's say over the last 50, 60 years, we've only truly had two presidents in this entire time that were truly uh, spirits of Christ, meaning they were truly on the good side. And that was Kennedy and our previous administration, um, JT or D DJT or whatever. The rest of them were uh, wolves in sheep clothing or lambs and whatever. But you, you get my point. You know, a lot of people liked Reagan. He, you know, he did a lot of good, but there was some behind the scenes, some very deep, uh, disturbing information about him. The same with all the previous Bush's administration. <laughs> All of them, including um, our current administration, and then the man before our previous administration, Obam Bam, and then all of the the presidents through the nine through the through the nineties. That gentleman that was you know had Monica, Monica Lewinsky in his office. <laughs> all of these presidents that I just named, every one of them, you know the husband and wife people that are obsessed with power, the oil rich company, um, presidents, you know, the, you know, like the can of beans Bush and then old bam, bam. If you actually research them, they're childhood friends. There's photos of every one of them hanging out on Bush seniors ranch at like 13 years old. Mm -hmm. This is an orchestrated cult control and yeah, they have all, they have all been a part of the plan, starting with Reagan through to the, you know, uh, I'll just say it, Clintons, and then the Bushes, and mm -hmm. then Obam Bam. It was essentially the exact same administration the whole time, ran by the people behind the scenes controlling everything. And the funny thing is, you would think that, that Trump would be a part of that. The circles that he his father would have run in, the people that they would have known, he wasn't. There's not one bit of proof that he is a part of that that deep state network, not one bit. So, and you know, Nancy Reagan was having seances and stuff, uh, having her her psychic come to the White House. <laughs> uh, I don't know how much Ronald was in was. Uh, involved in that but I, it's very well known that that's what nancy was doing even while she they were in the white house she was found out and uh i can't remember the name of her her psychic gene something i can't remember she's, she's they're, a they're, like every one of them their roots are satanic 
They may say and try to paint a picture of something different, but that's just the reality of it. They're all part of the skull and bones. You know, they're very cultish. And it doesn't matter how you dress it up. Either you are on Team Christ or you're on the other team. And all the other teams may have a facade on their front side, but it all goes to the same team, which is Lucifer's team. It's it's just that cut and dry. There's not so many people get confused with a variety of options. There's only two. <laughs> <They're> all the same. <laughs> there, yeah. you, you have Team Christ or you don't. And the and alternative is what it is. Yeah, you can't sit on the fence. The devil owns the fence. So, um, but anyway, so so back to Trump in Israel, and when he when he um, when he recognized Jerusalem, they were you know oh as the capital, um, the nation was so excited. They minted a Trump is Cyrus coin, a coin with Trump's face and Cyrus's face right next to him. So. Um, and, and Trump was actually a pretty good friend to Israel. Uh, he may not still understand the utter folly, a two-state solution, because, you know, he's, he's the art of the deal guy. He likes to bring all sides together and make a deal. That's what he's known for. And unfortunately, um, trying to do a two-state solution will be devastating for our nation. And uh, uh, so, and maybe that's why he wasn't in, in office that second term is because the Lord is okay. I'm not going to allow you to do this. <laughs> Whoop, boom. I don't know. We do know it was all, all you know, woo -woo, stolen. But uh, so the bottom you know, line. Is, huh? Yeah. It's, I mean, I know I've been overly critical of our previous administration. Um, I, I do that just because I try to make sure that we're not having the wool pulled over our eyes, you know, but the, yeah. the more and more I research it, the more I realize that I think he is on the good team. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it, it, it's the reality of it, though. There was a, a couple things that really had you scratching your head. But, you know, the more and more I dig and the more I look into it, it, it seems that, you know, he may have been involved with the the club throughout the 90s and rubbing shoulders with these folks. But I think it was strategic to get him to where he is. And then once he had that ability to use his power, he cut ties. Uh, it was almost like he was a mole in their club because he... Um, you watch a documentary. I watched a documentary on that on YouTube, and I was like, "That's genius!" <laughs> the way that I Donald haven't. Trump, it, it was yeah, I haven't seen any of that. Really? So, yeah, I'll, I'll try and find it and send it your way. It was really very interesting. It was about you know how he grew up and kind of the psychology of of him and uh, how he made his money was pretty genius because he didn't have any, he didn't have any money, but he made money out of nothing <laughs> because he was scrappy and he, he, was <laughs> head. and he did, he knew how to, to rub the right shoulders at the club, you know, go dance and have a couple of drinks, meet some people, make some connections and, and get some deals going. So I wish I was that smart, but anyway, so the big thing is, do not divide the land of, of Israel and do not divide Jerusalem. Don't do it. Well, what is Isaiah 45? Remember, he's president 45. Mm -hmm. And uh, this was on 4-5. This earthquake was on 4-5. Isaiah 45. This is what the Lord says to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of to subdue nations before him and to strip kings of their armor, to open double doors, double doors, not just doors, double doors. Now, some people say, is that two terms? There were a lot of, of, lot of prophetic voices, a lot of prophets said uh, back in 2017 and 20, or 2016 and 2020 that he was gonna get double doors. He was gonna get two terms. And when it didn't happen, people ripped those prophets to shreds. But we here in America were very short-sighted. Most of the prophets did not see the prophecies that they prophesied fulfilled. Poor Daniel, 
He's been waiting 4,000 years <laughs> for his prophecies. And we're mad because, oh, you know, their, their prophecy didn't come true right away. So is this possibly some kind of a word on the second of two terms? It might be. Okay, so to open double doors before him so that the gates, which represents influence, will not be shut. I will go before you and I will level mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Uh, they're trying to throw this man into prison for life. <laughs> yeah. They want, yeah. And it says right here, I will cut through bars of iron. I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. Hmm. Uh, what's tr truth social worth? <laughs> So that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by name and bestow by name. And what is his name? Trump, trumpet, victory. Um, I love that. I summon you by name and I bestow upon you a title of honor. Well, president would be a good one. Though you do not acknowledge me. And we know that when he was elected, he did not know the Lord. But he was a smart man and he put a prayer council around him and he took their counsel. And there is great evidence that he he is a living, breathing on, you know, Christ loving, born again man. His wife definitely loves the Lord. And they talk about the Bible. They talk about scripture. They give glory to God. He tells people, don't give glory to me. Give glory to God. It's mm, and he points up, you know, yeah, he brags, you know, uh, who brags more, him or Biden? Come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I, I find that just absolutely fascinating, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord and there is no other apart from me. There is no God. I will strengthen you. There is none like me. I mean, it's it's so cool. So here's all these promises that he made to Cyrus. Uh-oh. Potential spam. And my phone is <laughs> my phone is paired with my sorry guys. That was that was my my theme song. So <laughs> Hey, but, FYI, Samantha mm -hmm. is going to be dialing in, in any minute, and she has her testimony that uh, I want you to stick around for because um, it's okay. it's heartfelt. She's she will uh, great. Not, she's supposed to dial in at nine thirty, but well, then uh, I'm we'll see. Be really fast because I've got two minutes. Oh well, no, no, you can you can I, I, we'll we'll finish that after her testimony if anything, okay. and I'm I'm hoping Watchful um, is able to make it as well. Okay. So, um, so I find that super interesting that we've got the four five, we've got the 45 Trump is known as a Cyrus. And what is, um, I say a 45, it's God making a promise to Cyrus, this pagan King that he's going to hold his hand and he's going to, he's going to do all these great things for, for him, though he doesn't know who he is. And I believe by the time it was over, because the Jews were a great gift. To Babylon. And I, I love the way that God I don't, protects his people right in the right under the nose of the enemy. Where was where was um, Elijah? You know, he was he was right, right under Jezebel's nose. He was right under Jezebel's nose. He was he was 20 miles outside of Sidon. Hmm. You know, where was where was Moses hidden in Pharaoh's palace? You know, and yeah. so when protecting somebody, he protect for 70 years, he had to protect his nation and he put him in Babylon to protect him. Yeah. And every one of those kings, except for the one that, um, oh, what was his name? Bel Belshazzar or Belteshazzar? Some, yeah, Belshazzar. Because uh, Daniel's name was Belteshazzar. But Belshazzar um, was the one that got the, the writing on the wall. Um, but all those other kings they eventually saw, oh my gosh, your God is God. So now here's the other fun thing. So it was for this, this quake was 4.7 on the Richter scale. Now they've updated it to eight, which I find strange that very rarely happens. Uh, I've been watching and following and doing prophetic research on earthquakes and things like that for years.
And so they updated it to an eight. Oh. I'm kind of wondering if why. Uh, Samantha's here. I'm going to bring her in the chat. So bear with me one second. Hey, Samantha. Hi. Hi. I was having some issues with my headphones earlier. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Okay. Hi, it's Samantha. Can you, can you see your screen? There you go. Wait, you put her in the big screen over here. Okay. Hold on one second. I, I will. Uh, I'll switch it around. There we go. And I apologize if my oh you're fine. Around, I am shaking. I am so nervous. Oh, well, <laughs> set it on set it on something. Uh, I can't because I'm charging it and it won't oh, no. sit right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I understand. I understand. Speaking of charging, I'm going to do that too. <laughs> so. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say. And please, there, there's no reason to be uh, nervous or whatnot. We're, we're all just here to learn and love and share together. So it, it, there's no wrong way for you to do this. You know, no yeah, one's, no one's like judgmental. <laughs> okay, well. Um, Everybody's looking at Chris. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll start flexing and moving around <laughs> or something. I don't know. But. Um, okay, so I have been feeling it pressed upon my spirit for a few weeks, maybe closer to a month, that I should um, somehow share my testimony. And I have been ignoring it because I don't like being the center of attention. And this has me so far out of my comfort zone. Um, but the other morning I was scrolling through Instagram and I came across a post that said, one day you will tell the story about that one time you were struggling so bad, you didn't know what to do other than pray. And how without wow. realizing it at the time God stepped in, someone will need to hear that story to change their life too. And it just, that Holy Spirit conviction just hit me like a ton of bricks. And I just looked up and I was just like, okay, I'll see what I can do. And I pretty much immediately messaged you, Chris. And yeah, I was shaking the whole time I was typing that message, just thinking about this moment. Oh. Um, so my testimony um, pretty much starts um, as a toddler. Um, I had two imaginary friends, um, when I was little, one was Phil Collins because I loved him Yeah. and the other was actually Jesus. Sorry guys. I'm going to call back in. My son is bombing me here. Okay. No problem. No problem. Um, and you're good, honey. I, I have very distinct memories of um, sitting in my room, just talking to God and Jesus and teaching them how to play with my toys. Um, and that started probably three or four years old. Um, when I was around three, my parents separated and, uh, my mom had custody of me from Sunday night until I would go to school on Friday. And then for the weekend, I would be with my dad. And, um, I've, I've always been a daddy's girl. He's my best friend. Um, and I loved my time with him. Growing up, my mom and I did not get along very well. Um, and I just, before I go into anything else, I just want to say that nothing that I'm about to say is to attack my mom. Um, she's a very different person now than she was then. And, um, from a human a aspect, I understand why some of the things happened that happened in my childhood. Um, but some of these experiences that I had don't paint her in the best light. And I don't, if she would ever watch this, I don't want her to feel attacked at all because I do love you so much, mom. Um, so after my parents separated, my mom started seeing this guy and, um, 
he was not a good person. He oh. was an alcoholic. And his drink of choice was Coors Light. And to this day, I still cannot tolerate the smell of beer. Um, it instantly turns my stomach. Um, my mom and her fiance at the time, um, they moved constantly. Um, they would purposefully get us evicted from places because they would spend their money elsewhere and then we would move again. Um, and there, there was this one club in my hometown, um, like a private bar, um, that they spent a lot of time in and they would take me along and, um, yeah, it was not a good place for a kid to be, obviously. And we would be there so late that at night after the kitchen closed, I would have to take my sleeping bag into the kitchen and lay down and go to sleep on the greasy, gross kitchen floor of this bar. And um, I don't remember exactly when my mom's fiance started um, abusing me. But uh, when I eventually told my dad about it, um, I worded it to him saying that he was giving me my baths and he was cleaning me on the inside too. Oh and no. I am very blessed that God doesn't allow me to remember those exact moments. I just remember the exact bathroom that it happened in. And I remember telling my dad and I remember him taking me to children and youth and having to tell a stranger, some strange man, what was happening. Um, I remember he had this piece of paper with like the outline of a girl's body and I had to point to where the abuse was happening. Um, and no one believed me except for my dad. They, living in Pennsylvania, it's a very pro-mom state, and um, everybody just thought my dad was coaching me to say those things because he was jealous that my mom was with somebody else. Um, and, and my dad tried everything that he could to get me out of that situation. And I, I remember one Sunday night, particularly when he was taking me back to my mom's and my mom actually had to call the police because I just refused to get out of my dad's car. And, um, yeah, I, I remember actually like grabbing on to like the seat belt as they're trying to like pull me out of the car because I didn't want to leave and go back there. And eventually my mom and he broke up and we moved in with my mom's younger sister and her husband and their two daughters. And my older cousin and I did not get along at all. So I hated being there with them. Um, eventually she started dating somebody else and, um, he was, he was an okay guy, except, um, I was just part of the package. He didn't really want a kid or anything to do with a kid. And, um, eventually they broke up and we moved back in with my aunt. And then she started dating somebody else and he was also an alcoholic and um, when we were living with him I remember more than once um, he would just be really drunk and in the middle of the night he would just get into a fight with my mom and kick us out in the middle of the night and um, uh, Eventually, they broke up when he moved to another state. Originally, my mom was going to move with him and take me along, but uh, my dad um, contacted his lawyer, and that put a stop to that, thank God. Um, 
And then um, we would move back in with my aunt. And at this point, uh, my mom was single for a little while. We were just living with my aunt. Um, but because I, again, didn't get along with my older cousin, I hated being there. And so when my mom started taking um, evening courses at a cosmetology school, I um, started staying with um, someone who lived across the street from her one ex. And um, <clears throat> on the night of April 3rd, 2001, um, I was 11 at that time. It's actually the night before my 12th birthday. Um, her, the babysitter's stepdad, um, came over and um, he, uh, I hope this doesn't get any sort of flags, but. Yeah, just choose your. Okay. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. It is. It is what it is. It's you. You saying what you have to say is more important. So, you're you're um, fine. Luckily, that was not as bad as what happened with the first guy. Um, <clears throat> but it it was one of those moments. I I remember that every detail of it perfectly. Um, the next day I reported that to my teacher and, um, that night I told my mom and I, I remember her just bombarding me with a million and one questions. And, um, after a couple minutes, just putting my hands over my ears and just screaming, I don't want to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> The day after that, um, I did a walkthrough with my mom, my babysitter, and my babysitter's mom, telling them exactly what happened and how it happened. And then after that, my mom took me to a police station, and I had to give a statement. Um, on the 16th of April, my, my pap died, my mom's dad, after a, a fight with cancer. And approximately a year after that, I um, attempted to unalive myself for the first time. Wow. And a, a friend at school figured out what I was attempting and um, reported me. And so I remember sitting in the school's counseling office, um, having to call my parents to tell them. And I remember when I told my dad that he was just very, I'm going to cry. Um, he was very kind and compassionate and loving. And then I called my mom and she yelled so loud. I couldn't even hold the phone up to my ear. And then at that point, she had quit smoking for two weeks and blamed me for the fact that she was starting to smoke again. And that was kind of the start of me dealing with a lot of depression and anxiety. And over the next few years, I had um, attempted to unalive myself multiple times. And eventually I realized I didn't have the guts to go through with it. So I um, then began harming myself mm. and I became very addicted to that and um, just desperate for um, that pain to go away. And I just, every night I begged God that he would not let me wake up in the morning because um, I was just hurting so bad. And every morning that I woke up, I got so angry with God because at that time I was maybe 16 and it was just, you're all powerful. Why can't you just take this pain away? Yeah. Yeah. And 
And uh, eventually I got so angry with him that I, I totally renounced my faith. I wanted nothing to do with him anymore. And um, I was just on top of all the hurt. I was so angry. And um, eventually, about a year later, I started dating um, my ex-husband. Um, and um, he was not a believer. So, um, so we got along great in that aspect. Um, but he, over the years, became very controlling, very manipulative, um, extremely emotionally and psychologically abusive. And um, after being together for six years, we got married because what else do you do? And um, right before we got married, um, I, I was reading a lot of books and I was running out of things to read. And I was talking to my dad one night and he suggested that I read the Left Behind book series. And I was just like, nah, I don't, I don't wanna read that. I have no interest in that. Um, side note, I, I, this whole time I had been lying to my dad about renouncing my faith. As I was talking to him, it was still, oh yeah, I still believe in God, I still pray. Been there. Um, yeah because I knew how important God was to my dad and I didn't want to disappoint him. And I felt like out of anything I could ever do in my whole life, that was the one thing that could make him like disown me. Um, and he kept suggesting that I read a book series and hindsight being what it is. I now know that that was the Holy spirit working on me through him. And I, I had read so many different fictional book series about all the different ancient mythologies, Greek, Roman, Egyptian. I've even read fictional series about Wicca. And there was this little voice in my head that was just, oh, you've read all these other books about all these other mythologies. Why not read a book about the Christian mythology too? <laughs> and so eventually I gave in and I read the first book. And in between the first and second book, I just decided that I believed again. And it was within maybe the first couple of chapters into the second book, I called my dad, extremely nervous, and confessed to him that I had been lying to him for like eight years oh. about not believing. <laughs> and my dad responded in such a beautiful way. And I think if I remember correctly, we might have both been crying during that phone call. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, it was an incredible moment, as terrified as I was. <laughs> um, and um, I can tell you something really quick. I think it's yeah. amazing that it was the Left Behind series mm -hmm. that had you read and it was the left behind series something in there brought you back and here we are we're we're in the end of the end we're in the last hours of the last minutes yeah. you you are the best of your bloodline the best of every bloodline is on the earth right now for such a time as this this is the time that every other generation has has wondered about has thought about um you know, they, every generation thought, we're it, we're it, you know, no, right. we are it. And, yeah. and you were made for, for a great harvest. You are meant to bring in a great harvest with so much fruit. I cannot wait to see you in heaven with your crowns and, and all the people around you that you brought into the kingdom that you had a hand in, because it's going to be amazing. It's gonna be so amazing. You, you'll go, what? Who's this? Who's that? You won't even know that there are people that you influenced, that you had a hand in, in bringing into the kingdom. And, and I just love that it was the left behind books that got you to realize this is your time. 
This is who you are. You are an end times warrior, girl. You are an end times yeah. warrior. And I should also mention that even being a young kid, I've always been interested in the book of Revelation. It's always drawn me for some reason. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it was shortly after that, that my um, ex-husband noticed a Bible app on my phone because I figured if I'm reading this book series <laughs> about the book of Revelation, I should probably reread the book of Revelation because it's been a minute. And he got so angry, he actually took his wedding band off and it missed me, but he threw it at me and said, if you're going to believe in God, I want a divorce because how dare you love something more than me. Wow. Ooh. And... <laughs> Sorry. I had, to, I had to close my screen for a second. I was struggling, so I apologize. But continue, please. Um, <clears throat> eventually, uh, my ex-husband, probably using that as an excuse, had uh, began having an affair. And I realized, put two and two together by the way he was acting. And so we separated. And I had a period of time, about a month, where I don't really know how to explain it. It almost felt like not a spell, but like I just had no control over my thoughts because I was just out of my mind with grief from what was going on with my ex-husband. Mm -hmm. And I started doing a lot of things really out of character, started drinking, um, not heavily, but more than I ever had. And there was someone that I knew back in middle school who I started um, hanging out with. And um, we had been drinking a little bit one night. I wasn't drunk, but I was tipsy. He was very drunk. And he ended up um, uh, the R word. Oh, no. Um, and it took me months to come to terms with that, um, that that actually happened. I, I never reported it because nobody believed me when I was a young child. Nobody believed me when I was 12. Um, uh, I forgot to say that with the thing that happened when I was 12, that did eventually go to court and, um, he was found not guilty. Um, so I, I never reported it because why would I put myself through that all again for the third time? Um, and shortly after that, um, my now husband and I started dating and I'll never forget right after we started dating. Um, he just, he really helped pull me out of this just really deep depression that I was in over everything. Um, because at that point I was just a shell. I had lost over 20 pounds from not eating from stress. Um, my cheeks were almost like sunken in from the weight loss. Um, and I couldn't even make eye contact with him when we first started dating because I was just so used to just trying to make myself as small as possible and not be seen and not to bring attention to myself. Um, and he and I moved in together after about six months of just dating. Um, and again, hindsight being what it was, I realized that I was just living so incredibly lukewarm um, I was saying about how much I love Jesus and, um, I was, you know, reading my Bible or listening to it if I was at work and, um, but I wasn't really living like somebody who follows Jesus. I was still just kind of doing whatever I wanted and how I wanted. 
And while my now husband and I were engaged, um, I ended up, well, actually, right around the time we got engaged, I ended up getting pregnant. Um, and um, we ended up getting engaged and then getting married like two months later because of something going on with, with his daughter. She was possibly moving to another state, so we wanted to get married before she left. Thank God that fell through. Um, and it was kind of around this time that, uh, my dad and I started getting together weekly for a Bible study. Um, we were watching AOC network videos, which just really touched my heart, Chris, when you sent or shared an AOC network video a few weeks ago, because that's what really started this whole journey for me and really getting super deep into my faith. So that just really touched me. And um, yeah, those videos are amazing. So if you haven't checked those out, please do because they're incredible. Um, and I slowly started realizing that um, I needed to change the way that I was doing things and the way that I was looking at things. So it started really subtly, listening to my Bible more often, watching more videos online, um, and eventually that led me to your videos. And um, I, I started going through all the music that I listened to and getting rid of anything that had any foul language in it. And, um, and then eventually, maybe about six, months ago or so, I deleted all the music off of my Spotify and switched to strictly just worship music because I really felt it pressed upon my spirit that I need to be firmly planted in the kingdom and stop having any part of myself in the world. And um, I know some people in my life have thought that I'm totally crazy for what I'm doing, but I'm just doing what I feel led to do. And at the end of the day, I'm not going to answer to any man. I'm going to be answering to Jesus. And I'm not going to stand up there and have to face him and say, sorry, some of my friends and family thought I was bananas for getting rid of secular music and not wanting to do Halloween and wanting Easter to strictly be about Jesus and not a bunny. Um, yeah. But yeah. And, and in, in the past few years that this journey has been happening, I have had some really incredible experiences with, with Jesus from the Holy Spirit convincing me to read Left Behind to um, nights that I would be outside with my dog, um, just looking up at the night sky, just praying really, really hard about something. And all of a sudden I, I would see a shooting star and that's happened multiple times. And while some people might say it's a coincidence, yeah. if you know, you know, and we know mm -hmm. Jesus and there's no such thing as coincidence. And there's also not that many shooting stars. <laughs> there's yeah. not. Yeah. And there, there was another time I was outside praying really hard. And though I couldn't see him, I, I felt like as I was looking up at the sky that I was looking directly at him, like a legit face-to-face -face conversation. Mm -hmm. And anytime something like this happens, I always call my dad right away. And you'll never believe what happened. And I just... It's just such an incredible feeling. And, and there's been times um, when I worked a second shift job on the way home from work, I would call my dad and we'd be having like a good Bible study type discussion. And, and twice I'll just stop and say to my dad, do you feel that? He's like, what? And I'm like, I really, really, really feel Jesus. Like he's right here. And then my dad being the goof that he is, he goes, well, he's always right there. <laughs> and yes, I know dad, he's always there. But this was like infinite mm -hmm. times that. And you, you know there... something else I love? 
Yeah. This is what I really love about your testimony. It's how close you are with your dad and how much you love your dad. And I just have to say that one of the reasons you have no problem seeing God as a good father anymore is because your, your earthly father is such a good father. You've yes. got an example of the father in heaven. And, yes. and I can understand where you would be upset and disappointed, like, God, why didn't you protect me? Where were you? And you know what? He was right there and he was hurt and he was grieving for you and he was grieving with you. It, it'd be great if he could just snatch us out of every terrible thing that happens, but he's not a genie in a bottle. Right. But he's a good father and he gave you a good father so that you would never, ever wonder again. Yeah. And no offense to any dads watching this, but I truly have the best dad ever. <laughs> he is. I, you do. <laughs> incredible. And, um, eventually like when i told my dad all of this at one point he had such a beautiful response to why i was so angry at god and why didn't you get me out of this and why haven't you taken away this pain and he very simply put look what he let his own son go through look what mm -hmm. jesus had to go through of course he's gonna let us go through things because look at what Jesus went through. And that just hit me so hard because he's absolutely right. Yeah. And yeah. Um, my <clears throat> two of my favorite Jesus um, experiences, if you will, um, was one was a couple months ago at work. Um, I work at a college. Um, basically I'm a custodian there and I was cleaning our indoor pool and I just had worship music on and I'm jamming and I'm singing out loud. And thank God no one was around to hear that because no one wants to hear that. But all of a sudden I could just really, really mm -hmm. strongly feel his presence. And as I'm sweeping the bleachers and, and singing and um, doing a little wiggle um, out of the corner of my eye, I see something. And for just an instant, I actually saw Jesus. Wow. And I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was him. Like it wasn't an angel. It, it was actually him. And I just stopped and I just sat down for a second and my eyes just like welled up. And I immediately texted my coworker and told her about it um, because she is, I have great coworkers who are, you know, men and women of faith and it's wonderful. And yeah, that was so incredible. Mm -hmm. And then about two weeks ago, um, I was praying with my son. He's four now. And um, I've started giving him an opportunity to say what he wants to say to Jesus. And that night, he, he always says something to the effect of, I love you, Jesus, or I like you, Jesus. And for some reason that night, he just goes, and I want to play with you. And then just like that, he just starts going, peekaboo, peekaboo. <laughs> and it was just such a beautiful and precious, innocent moment. And again, I could, I didn't actually see Jesus, but I could feel not just his presence, but his joy at, mm -hmm. at my son playing with him in that moment. And it was, it was so incredible. That's awesome. And what a what a god we we have he's just amazing yes he is yeah now can I, can i ask you something really quick sure um what do you feel like your identity in christ is do you have any markers or 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 hints on what you think that would be about what what do you feel your identity is i have no idea <laughs> I, I just worship constantly. Um, I, worship. yeah. So maybe that's my, my thing. I, I don't know, but I just, I just really, really, really love, love him. And he's just incredible. And the fact that I am here doing this tonight is 
proof of him if anyone is looking for it because <laughs> anyone who knows me knows this is not the type of thing that I would yeah. do with over 300 people watching. Yeah. Um, I have nervous breakdowns just having to give a book report in school when I was still in school. And yeah, this is just not something that I would ever do. And that's why I ignored him for so long mm -hmm. in, in doing this. And yeah, what, what an incredible community you have mm -hmm. built Christopher with watchful because yeah, this is just amazing. This is a very surreal moment for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow. I, I would you ask, ask the Lord to start talking to you about your identity about okay. who you are, some prophetic markers. And it'll be really weird because he'll give them to you in strange ways. Um, when I was born, an angel came to my dad and said, behold, the handmaiden of the Lord. And I mean, that's something I've held on to my whole life. But I will tell you what, the word handmaiden comes up in the weirdest places. <laughs> and okay. every time it is, it is connected to a different scripture, a different thing, and a different thing that tells me about who I am to him. So ask him because he might give you a word, a phrase. He might take you to a specific scripture and you'll realize oh, that's, that's who I am to you. So ask him cause he'll answer you. That's a really good idea. I'm going to do that tonight. Wow. What a testimony. Yeah. That was, that was very brave of you to come on and explain and pour your heart out it's thank you for doing that and uh, i think it might have done your heart some good to get it off your chest as well yeah um, and thank you for letting me do it well anything that we can do to provide support or anything you know it's we're, we're here, we just want to love and learn together. So um, all you'll find is, you know, understanding and support with us here in our entire community. And uh, I wish Watchful was on with this so he could provide some input on this as well. But yeah. you're, you're always welcome to come on and, and if you need to vent um, anytime, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's what it's. It does good for the heart to get stuff out, especially when it's been pinned up for so long. Yeah. yeah. And and to get some honest feedback that from people that care. Yeah. I can tell you that you're, you're going to want to go back and read the chat. I popped over and looked at the chat, and um, there are a lot of people, a lot of women that said, you're telling my story. You're telling my story. Yeah. For sure. And I know that you're you're on our social platform, so maybe we should start a group um, there for, you know, support for folks like yourself, because it appears that this is uh, happening to more people than what is realized. And uh, you well, need a place that you can provide that input and receive you know, support and feedback and share with others that have had life-changing experiences like this. Um, That's a really good idea. Now, Laura in the chat is a certified Christian counselor and she offered um, to, to help. So that might be something that we can do is, is get you and Laura together, have a group started and, and get some healing going within the community. That's right. So yeah, Laura, Laura, sorry that, that I am volunteering you, but I think you did, might've already volunteered yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Laura, what I'll do is I'll make you uh, a moderator on the new group that I'm going to form on the uh, platform so that everybody can work together and try to provide support and healing for each other, you know, it, coming together and talking about this stuff. Um, I think is, you know, the best way to try to navigate through it. Though I, I can't relate, but um, I know that the emotional uh, feedback and support, I would assume, would be helpful. 
Yeah, there's always power in in numbers and knowing you're not alone in in your experiences, for sure. Whew. Um, yeah, so uh, Samantha or Laura or anybody else that is in a, you know, that wants to be involved with this, you know, let me know what you guys want to have it titled as. And uh, I'll create it tonight and so you guys can... <clears throat> start to uh, heal together and uh, you know it's uh, yeah sorry I'm a little struck for words it's um, for me I, I struggle with stuff like this because I have daughters so my mind instantly goes to that and um, it it creates some anger inside of me so I have to choose my words wisely so i apologize well can we pray for you sweetheart i would love that okay everybody in the chat you guys you guys pray your own special prayer for her let's bomb her with the the best prophetic words the best prayers of blessing everybody go for it y'all father god you are so good you are so good and and you have held Samantha throughout her whole life, throughout every painful experience, throughout every victory. She was being held by you, and she still is, Lord. And I ask you, Lord, to reveal to her who you made her to be so that she will walk out every step of her identity, her purpose, and her destiny, that every, every person that she is to bring into the kingdom, that she would prophesy to, that she would serve, that she would get that opportunity, that she would not miss one person to bring into the kingdom so that you get your full reward. Lord, we pray that she would be fully victorious throughout her life. We, we ask you for your hand of protection over her husband, over her son, over her stepchildren, over her dad, over her mom even. Lord, we pray that there would be restoration and redemption for the entire family, that you would go back in Samantha's timeline and apply your, your redemption over every place of hurt, every, every word that was spoken, that prophesied something other than who she was into her. Go back over every broken relationship, reply, apply your blood, apply your redemption, and bring something new tomorrow. Amen. 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 That was beautiful. Thank because, you. Because this is a All time. Right. Hold, hold on, Grace. Let me grab my Bible for just a second. So right. Jesus is a time traveler. We, we trust him. We, we, we pray about our future and we pray about our today, but we think that the past is gone. It's over. There's nothing we can do. And so many people keep themselves in bondage, even though they've been forgiven, even though they've been redeemed and restored, they keep themselves in bondage because they, they can't stop thinking about the past. They can't forgive somebody. They can't get over. I mean, it's it's a terrible kind of bondage, but, but Jesus is a time traveler. I'm gonna read Psalms 139 to you and, and to everybody. You guys just know that he can go back in time and minister to you. He can go back in time and change the way things that you see and feel things today. He can put a kind of healing in your past that shows up in your presence. So here's Psalms 139. Lord, you know everything there is to know about me. You perceive every moment of my heart and soul, every movement of my heart and soul. And you understand my every thought before it enters my mind. You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book. For you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. 
and in kindness you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. What? With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. This is too wonderful, too deep, too incomprehensible. Your understanding of me brings me wonder and strength. This is where it gets even better. Where could I go from your spirit? Where could I run and hide from your face? If I go up to heaven, which is eternity, it's not in time, you're there. If I go down to the realm of the dead, which is also eternity outside of time and space, you're there. If I fly into the radiant sunset, that's yesterday, that's the past. Oh wait, if I fly in with wings into the shining dawn, that's tomorrow, you're there. And if I fly into the radiant sunset, you're there waiting. You're there waiting. Why is Jesus waiting in your past? Why is he waiting in your past? Because he knows that there's things that you need to deal with from your past that he wants to put his blood over and his redemption over. And I'm talking to everybody. Think about the word that was spoken, the relationship that was broken. Think about the, the thing you, you haven't been able to get past and give it to him. You think it's in the past, it's in the present for Jesus. And I'm going to be honest. This is an unbelievable revelation of redeeming your time uh, from Pastor Troy Brewer. And he's got an unbelievable book on called Redeeming Your Timeline. And it, the testimonies that he gives, and I've, I've got some Redeeming Your Timeline testimonies myself of my own life that, I mean, are out, they're just drop dead cool. Um, yeah, go get that book and just believe Jesus is not subject to time at all. He's not. So there you go. That's what Psalms was that? What was Psalms was that, Kip? Psalm 139. 139. Yeah, and I was I was using a, a more modern translation so Got that it. it was more yeah, so that it was more uh poetic. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know me. Well, um we'll reconvene tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Um this was an emotional testimony, so um, I'm gonna call it a night. It's uh, yeah. but yeah. but we'll 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 get we'll get back on it tomorrow night at nine o'clock, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, from all of us here, you know, watchful uh, Kip and I, we, you know, we love all you guys and are very appreciative of your loyalty to us. And thank you um, guys so much. Absolutely. And we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Good night. All right. Goodbye. Good